Hey everyone, in this video, I wanna quickly go over the acoustic panels in my theater room and kind of show you some before and after, both audio examples of me talking in there and then measurements in REW. Now I wanna thank, I can't remember the name and I'm so sorry, someone commented about a month ago on one of my videos saying, I'd really like to see the difference the acoustic panels make in your room. And I realized that, well, it's been, Oh God, I don't know, 2022, so over three years since I put those in there and I never made a video like that. Now I have done measurements in the past just for my own personal curiosity, I guess. But in this video, I want to actually like show you, uh, have you listen to what it sounds like with and without the panels. Like I said, a couple years ago, I built these panels myself. We bought this house. I didn't have a huge budget. And I think I spent maybe at the time between 150 to $200 on materials, not including the circular saw or stands or anything that I used. I just used some furring strips, like some simple wood furring strips, some rock wool insulation, the two inch, and some weed blocker fabric, and then some breathable burlap that I got from Joann's. And honestly, I learned a lot and I will at the very end of this video kind of go over what I would maybe change about that and what I recommend for someone maybe just starting out thinking of doing the same thing because I think honestly anybody could make them and you save a lot of money. So the way I set this up, this testing, the testing methodology if you will, is I took the panels off and I recorded me saying some stuff into the microphone. Basically at the other end of the room and I wanted you to hear the room. And then basically I put the panels back on and you know, you'll be able to hear the difference. Now I did use kind of a faux binaural recording setup and a stereo configuration. So if you're wearing headphones, which I'd actually recommend for the part where I'm talking about the differences and basically the differences between having the panels off and on, it'll really show up in headphones probably more than just watching on your phone. But if you do have a home theater, it'll probably show up well there too. I just haven't tested that. Also took some measurements in REW of my center channel. And after those tests, we'll come back and actually see kind of what's going on by looking at the reverb time or the RT60 decay time, which is basically how long it takes for sound to decay by 60 decibels like in the room. So like a longer decay time, means basically more echo and a shorter one means less echo and kind of clearer sound. So anyway, let's hop over there and I'll have you listen to the examples. You're hearing my voice in my untreated theater room. Notice the reverberation of my voice, the echo in the room. When I do the clap test, I hope that you can actually hear the room with the way I'm recording this. It may actually sound like I'm in more of a bathroom or hallway. Maybe not that severe, but you can hear the sound of the room. Now here is the exact same setup as before, same mic, same position. I'm trying to speak at the same volume and you should be able to hear the difference because the only thing I've changed is I've added the acoustic panels and instantly you should hear my voice become more focused. There's less echo in the room. There's less reverb. My voice tends to just stop when I stop speaking. Right? And if I do the clap test that I did earlier, you should hear far less of the room. I have not adjusted anything other than the mic gain in post-production. No noise reduction, nothing like that, no EQ. This is straight from the camera and that's it. You're hearing my voice in my untreated theater room. Notice the reverberation of my voice, the echo in the room. Now here is the exact same setup as before, same mic, same position. I'm trying to speak at the same volume and you should be able to hear the difference because the only thing I've changed is I've added the acoustic panels. You're hearing my voice in my untreated theater room. Notice the reverberation of my voice, the echo in the room. Now here is the exact same setup as before, same mic, same position. I'm trying to speak at the same volume and you should be able to hear the difference because the only thing I've changed is I've added the acoustic panels.
So having listened to that myself after I recorded it, I was actually surprised because I felt like the difference would be more substantial in the recording. I don't know, maybe it's the way I recorded it, but in the room without the panels, it's very echoey. But with the panels on, there's like, it's very quiet. I don't wanna say it's dead because there is some liveliness to the sound, but it's very, very subdued. We can actually see that in Rumi Q Wizard. So let me go ahead and dive in here. So first I wanted to just go over the frequency response differences. You can kind of see what absorption can do. Now I have no diffusion in the room. All of the panels were placed at like the first reflection points. And I think a couple panels are just kind of placed where symmetry made the most sense. Sometimes symmetry makes more sense than actual acoustical benefit. If we look at this here, you could see that basically our green is our after. That's with the acoustic panels on, our red is without. So we've tamed a lot of those peaks and stuff up here, but honestly, the frequency response isn't why you want to treat your room, not at all. For that, we need to look at RT60. And the easiest way for me to do that is with the overlays so we can directly compare the two. If we take a look at this here, this is our RT60. And I'm using TOPT because my room is much smaller. Typically, a smaller room will have by default a shorter decay time than a larger room. It kind of makes sense, right? There's less places for things to bounce off of an echo. 300 milliseconds is probably right on the money for a room of my size. You can see it's kind of all over the place. There's no consistency here. Maybe a little bit around the 400 to, I don't know, 1K, one k, one and a half k, 1.1k. These are kilohertz, by the way. So we can see that it's kind of consistent here. If we look on the left, you'll see that we are hovering right around 175 milliseconds there. But then as we get up to like 1.6, 1.7K, we're at like 300. So the goal is to really get a lot of this as consistent as possible. So with that said, let me turn on the one with the panels. Wow, okay, that is quite a bit different <laughs> than what we have for the red line. And I'm using TOPT here in case anybody out there is watching and they're like, oh my God, you need to be using T30 or T20. The reason I do TOPT is because the room is so tiny. It's it's 11 and a half by 12 and a half. But basically I've always found TOPT to have just a slightly more accurate result. And this is actually talking to Stephen Smith, home theater gurus as well. He's like, yeah, just use that one. So as you can see though, we are pretty dry. <laughs> from about 350 hertz all the way up to 10K. This doesn't go past 10K, so don't try to measure here to 20K. So I'm hovering anywhere between like 160 here, the, the highest to maybe, what is this, 115. So I think on average it's about 140 to 150 milliseconds, which is honestly what most recording studios and uh, sound stages are at for mixing and mastering and things like that. And it's a sound that I prefer as a drummer, as someone who spent time in recording studios. It's just what I tend to gravitate towards. What this does for dialogue clarity is amazing. It just makes dialogue so easy to understand. My wife and I were watching Tenet uh, just recently, and I had tried to watch it in our old house. It didn't have any treatment, and I could always just, ha I always had trouble understanding anything people were saying in there. Now, not at all. Now, what you can see is as we get lower in frequency, you know, 350 or below, we have less of an impact. And that's because I don't have any bass traps. My room's super small. I could probably deal with some bass traps. I could probably do with some bass traps. To make effective bass traps, you really need big acoustic absorption to tame those the, the bass. But honestly, the bass isn't too bad. It's this right here that's up at like the 375, almost 400 millisecond uh, range that kind of bothers me. I would love in a perfect world to have just consistency all throughout. But as it stands right now, I'm pretty happy with this. Now, something that I could have done is I could have lowered the acoustic panels and that would have picked up more of this on the lower end. And again, this was me talking to Stephen Smith. It's something that he actually recommended. But at the time I had already put the panels on the wall and honestly, I just didn't feel like changing them. We can see here though, that while the frequency response didn't 
change. It's lar- largely the same. The actual reverb time did. And what I could say is both my wife and I really love this room. Neither of us find it too dry. I remember telling Gene Della Sala, I was like, oh, I'm around 140, 150 milliseconds. And he was like, it must be like an anechoic chamber in there. No, it isn't. It's still, you can have a conversation. It's comfortable in there. I actually sleep in there sometimes because I just We'll be watching a video and then next thing I know I'm asleep just because it's so so comfortable and quiet. So with that said, what's the kind of takeaway here overall? Like I said, it, it's much, much clearer the clarity that you get from all the speakers. Now this is just the center channel. I could go through and measure each one. It just didn't feel for this kind of quick video that that would have been something I wanted to do. If I was making the acoustic panels today, I would invest in better quality wood. The furring strips that I got were the cheapest of the cheapest I could find. I had to go through, and they love you at Home Depot and Lowe's when you do this. I had to go through the furring strips and find the straightest ones because they all had some type of bow or some type of like they were angled and None of them were as, none of them were perfectly straight. I would have probably invested in some higher quality pine or cedar or something like that. Something that was already planed that was that was perfectly straight. I would have spent more money doing that, but it would have resulted in a higher quality, uh, like finished product. Although honestly, I didn't really care at the time. I was just trying to save money. And you know what? Three years on, they still work perfectly fine. So yeah, the difference really surprised me, especially when I first put them up. But even now, I hadn't taken the panels off of the wall in a long time, probably a year or so. I kind of forgot how it sounded in there without the panels on the wall. And when I put them back on, I was like, oh my God, like this is a massive difference. Like I just walk into the room and it kind of gives you that, like I'm in a theater, I'm in a quiet room type of environment. And I can't wait to go back in there and, and play some video games and watch some movies. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've ran similar tests in your room, I'd love to know the results. Please let me know in the comment section below. Also, are you interested in a full deep dive into basically what each channel measures like before and after? I, something I've thought about doing, but I'm not sure that there are enough people that would actually watch it. So let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to learn more about that. If you'd like to learn more about Rumi Q Wizard and how to set up the whole RT60 thing and how to read that, also let me know. I mean, I'm always open to ideas. I have a running list on my phone of just things that people recommend to me that I eventually want to get to. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful at all, please feel free to hit that like button. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, feel free to do so. It really helps me out and I hugely appreciate it. Thank you everyone so much for all the support that you've shown over the past few years. I just, I love doing this for you guys. I love being here for you guys and trying to save you money and get the most out of your system. So with that said, until next time, I will catch you in the next video.